Bonani, Son Bonani, Afsheni. My name is Nom Sabutele Zishezi. And of course, people that love me, they call me the Gomorrah Diva. It is the new year, and we start this year stronger. Thank you to Metropolitan. Guys, you know, when we talk about finances and we talk about money, people are shy when we talk about cash. Uh, there's, a, there's silence in the room. We wait for anger to trigger these conversations when it comes to money. When I call my friend, friend, let's go to a restaurant. She's angry. Ah, ah, it David order took my money, my last 700 friends. Why do it for anger to talk about money? Ah, eh, they want to We've got Metropolitan Industrial Experts and insurers who are going to help us make financial uh, choices, good financial choices. Hey, Sabonga Group Metropolitan. But before I introduce the man behind me, the magician, Yama Pots, he makes the things that make the pots to be done, but I'll introduce him later. For now, I have to introduce our distinguished guest, Abantu Obama VIP. Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Come on in, come on in. Welcome, oh, just on time. Hey, guys. Hi. How are you? So sure. It is actually for you. You mm. just came in right on time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're cooking yeah. food. Yeah. I'm so excited, guys. I'm very excited that we'll be talking about something that we love, money. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes money doesn't love us. It <laughs> runs away somehow. Please introduce yourself. Today I'll be your chef. My name is Linzui, Linzui Pengu, and I'm a chef. And I actually used to be in investment and finance before. Great. And to our... Yes, so I'm the sous chef, the second in command, I guess you can say that. Mm -hmm. I'm um, I've been a chef for eight years, I think, now. Um, wow. And me and Pengu met at the first kitchen I ever worked in. He was my senior so mm -hmm. and uh, yeah so he's taught me a lot actually the chefs are looking good i'm sure the food is also gonna be looking good <laughs> thank you very much and to our beautiful guests our our vips can you please introduce yourself my name is nazo galago and um, i've been in the insurance industry for quite some time but currently i head up our complaints department at metropolitan um, so I get to see all our lovely compliments and, you know, our sore points and we get to sort that out for all our customers. Mm. Yeah. Okay. okay, hi guys. My name is Mamo Khete Ramulifi and I am self-employed. I have a lot of insurances just to cover myself for the near future and whatsoever. Sure. Mm -hmm. All right. My name is Mzondi Lerikla Opo. Been employed for a long time, now 10 years. Um, me and insurance has been a life thing, you know, mm -hmm. because those are the one things that cover you. Mm -hmm. And yeah, those are the good relationships so far. Okay. Good. Okay. And I'm Gerald Mwandia Mbira. I'm a certified financial planning professional. Um, I'm an author, an entrepreneur, and I give advice around money and also obviously making the right decisions with insurance and other, mm -hmm. and other matters. Hi guys, I'm Kay Khadebe. I used to be a mechanical engineer, but now I make YouTube videos helping people to increase their income online and all things around money and increasing their money. So yeah, that's me. Great. Yeah. I don't know whether should we go sit down, Chef Linzo? Yeah, you? sure. I think I'll I sit know. down. But before I sit down, any drinks, guys? Personally, I'll always say personally because I, I like referring to myself so that you can be able, able to understand. Um, my advice, you know, we go through stuff, especially financially. You know, people don't want to talk about money. People don't want to talk about their fails when it comes to money. Um, who advises you? Who advises you? Obviously, the pros also need to yeah, advise, you know? You know, personally, it's my wife. And then I also do co consult colleagues. It's very important to, to always get a second, third opinion in anything you do, especially around money as well always shop around because mm. every single um, product, every single solution, mm. it exists for a reason. And I think one of the things I like to explain firstly is that it's a financial universe. Yes. And every product is there for a reason and it's not evil. We need to get rid of this thing, financial institutions, money, the devil. No, the devil is in your head. 
it can be scary. No, it it's scary. very scary, guys. This, the, and intimidating. It's, it's very intimidating. intimidating. And I think that's that's really the the real reason why we think money, financial institutions, they, there's always a scheme behind it. It's about let's empowering our, ourselves with the knowledge because it's the lack of knowledge which allows us to end up as money slaves mm. instead of being money masters. You know, when you talk about being a money master, there's a thing when you, when you see in influencers, when they talk about, you know, this is how I drink my red wine, this is what's what I'm in, in, in. The influence of, of, of like maybe, maybe getting an advice from an influencer, but they're not telling the truth. You know, let, let's talk about that. When, when, we, talk, when, when we, we sell a brand and there's no truth in it, you know, how would it help me as a normal person? The saying goes, never judge a book by its cover. Yeah. And often many people are living a fake reality, especially when it comes to their finances. Mm -hmm. I think you always have to bring it to your own situation. You know, I can't be living in a one bedroom flat and you giving me advice about, you know, a, a mansion house or whatever the case might be. So um, I think that's where you would have to actually look at your own life and see if does this actually fit? So what drives you to, to help people financially? <clears throat> I think for me it's just my own experience and my struggles and having been broke, having quit jobs before and just feeling like there was no one that looked like me on the internet, on YouTube, explaining mm. these concepts. You know, there's a specific type of people that explain it and sometimes it's not relatable. So I felt like I've experienced things, I've learned things and I don't think that everyone has to learn things the yeah. most painful way. Yeah, sometimes you should definitely learn from your own experience and I think it will stick more than anything. But you can also learn from other people's failures, right? When other people share their mistakes that they've made. I think, yeah, we can shortcut life if you're willing to learn from other people's mistakes as well. So that was, that's what drives me. I really want to just share what I've learned so people don't have to go through the same painful mistakes yeah, that I went through. What you're saying, it's, it's very important because, you know, there's a saying, they learn nyam. You know, they, through experience, that's how they will, they will, they will know about their, their, their misfortunes and then they will try to change their conditions. Yeah. So it's very difficult to see someone tell us, telling us that these are my experiences until I feel it myself. It's, it's unsaid, but it's, it's clear that there's previously advantaged groups and previously disadvantaged groups. Mm. And, you know, there has to be a change in how we see ourselves. We've almost conditioned ourselves to fail financially. Mm. So it goes into other aspects of our lives. We've conditioned ourselves, I will never understand insurance. I will never understand money. I will always lose money. So we've made it okay to fail when it comes to being money masters. And I think, you know, it's, it, it, as much as we can say experience is the best teacher, um, we also need to change the narrative in terms of um, how do we actually get to the other side. There's not enough um, information around uh, moving away from born to suffer or to born to succeed. Yes. You know? <laughs> so me and my brother, my brother also uh, sells food he has a business mm -hmm. so what we do is we employ our parents to work for us so that we pay them I win. so that <laughs> yeah, yeah. so that they don't they don't depend on mm. us we have, we have to start our own yes. lives we have to start our own families mm. it's painful to give your mom or your dad money and they go drink it mm. I mean you, you your hard earned money you give it to someone and they go blow it so it, it, it's better if they work for it what they do with it it's up to them. You know, as coming from the Insurer Metropolitan, we just also wanted to, um, you know, have this lunch and um, because I share my knowledge with you, you share my knowledge Please. with me because we won't always have these platforms. Um, but right now, I will go to my family with whatever yeah. you guys give me and that's what we want to tell our client um, out there that, um, you know, we want to equip them, we want to give them the correct tools to go out there and make better decisions. Beautiful. Chef, my chef, Ukupina. Yes, my dearest, I'm here. In Kaila, the yeah. conversations are. The, the, the it's table hitting, it's, it's hitting nicely, up. nicely. Yeah, the, the finances are. Like, I feel after this whole conversation, uh -huh. I'll be financially literate. Like, oh, sure. I will know everything. I'm a table order of a bouncing. Uh, <laughs> like, guys, we are, we're going to be talking about everything about debit orders and deductions. Yeah. Our enemy, <laughs> debit order. <laughs> 
But before we speak about that, mm -hmm. we, we, what's on the menu? So for starters, you have been speaking about being scared of David Orders. This <laughs> fear of like the Cloud 25 for the 30th yes. or the 15th. Yes. And so I thought, let me play on to that narrative and let me feed you something for starters today um, that most people are scared of, mm. that most people are fearful of. And let's teach them who are watching that we can break through our fears mm. by eating the first dish. You're getting very excited I'm now. I'm so scared. <laughs> I'm getting so scared. The more you right? talk, I'm like... So who here has eaten um, tang, ulimi? In African culture, eating a tang, sometimes your enemy makes you not speak again. Oh. Oh. Am I so going to speak have, again? So you have an excuse not to create any order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a very small dish. And the reason why is because you want like the extravagance of flavor to punch in. Okay, if you have too much of too much of cream and butter, it's like eager, you're like, ah, that's like food. But if you have a little bit of everything together and they're all pungent flavors, just like if we put all our might and all our, our effort into paying our debit mm. orders, what happens? They get paid. <laughs> they get paid. Okay. <laughs> all right, so for starters, we've got some tang, um, some parsley puree, some palm puree, mustard, and a little bit of a jus as well. Mm. Okay. <laughs> this is nice. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. This is definitely for the crab. <laughs> yeah. For the crab. Talking about being uncomfortable, guys. When we talk finances, when we talk money, why do people become uncomfortable? What? The, why does money make us? Because there's never enough. <laughs> she said it. Mm. <laughs> there's never enough. Mm. You feel like you're pinching here, pinching here, sacrificing there. So I think it's that feeling of you're not living your best life the way you want to. So that's why it's a sore topic. And every time when there's a space sleep, you hide it, you know. But then if you have this thing of, I know, you know, he knows more about my finance, my finances. I would show him my pay slip and say, you know, this is the money I get every month, and I'm planning to buy, you know, maybe a car. Can you help me? You know, if we have those conversations and we are more, do you speak about your finances? I have to, you know. Every time when 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 money gets in, you know, yeah. all of it is responsibilities, mm -hmm. assigned responsibilities. But yes. if manje, uh, it gets in and then. You don't tell anyone. Mm. That means you spend it however you want. Mm. So somehow you like, as as our expert said, that, that you need to 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 sit down yeah. with those you are living with, a spouse, whether uh, uh, your your kids who yes. are old enough to to or your parents. That this is the amount of money that I have, and then this is these are the responsibilities. Whenever money gets in, my wife sits next to me. And then she gives me all the books and what List. needs to, to happen, mm. you know? Yeah. Mm. I, th I think you've hit a nail on the, on the head. Money requires transparency and accountability. The wealthiest people in the world are surrounded by the most counselors and advisors, mm. okay? So we seem to get it wrong and think money is a secret. Money shouldn't be a secret. The more transparent and accountable you are with yes. your finances, yeah. the more successful you will be because you've got help. I'm a person that's very, I'm based on logic and rational. Um, so I need things to make sense to me. So I always try to make sense to other people as well. Um, not married so i only communicate um with my parents like my extended family which for me is my immediate family so i will always because there's certain things we we have black tax um certain things that we need to do so i definitely communicate with them they know i think it was a mistake to tell them how much i earn in hindsight big mistake hindsight big, big that was mistake. a huge mistake let's drink to that mistake um, <laughs> but I, I definitely do share with them, this is what I'm doing this month, or this is what I'm trying to do for the yeah. next 12 months sometimes, because I'm a person that um, budgets and I try to stick to it. So I will let them know so that their expectations as well, I can manage yeah. them. So for me, definitely with my family, I, I, I don't mind. Sorry to cut you. I have a question, right? You guys are talking about how important it is to be accountable, mm. to be transparent. But let's say I'm someone that's always been very secretive with my money. How do I get started? How do I get the ball rolling? Maybe I'm not ready to tell people exactly Exactly how much I earn, every cent I spend. But how can I get that started, that culture that you guys are talking about? 
Okay, firstly, transparency and accountability. Choose who you're transparent and accountable to. Mm -hmm. Okay. So family and friends, you wouldn't go and advertise your salary because that's the beginning of black tax drama. <laughs> because everyone is going to budget according to your earnings. Mm, you know? Of course. So, so it's important you're transparent and accountable to even just one person being your financial planning professional. Yeah. yeah. Nomsa said she's not transparent and accountable to everyone. But she's got someone who advises her with her mm. finances. Mm. So I would say just choose that to be your only person. So normally, as a financial planning professional, I end up being and walking a life journey with my clients. So if I meet you now, you're single. When you get married, I also automatically adopt your husband and we do an ITC check on him. Make sure he's what he says and he's not lying to you um, because my, my, you know, men can do these things. Um, so it's important to realize, choose the right people to be transparent and accountable to. And I think that's where we often get it wrong because we choose to be transparent and accountable to the wrong people. Uh, I'll give you a case in point, an example. You know, our topic is debit orders. Mm. Um, we don't want to be transparent and accountable to the people we owe money through a financial contract. Mm -hmm. So it's important around this table that mm. I always make it clear, financial institution is not the enemy. The enemy, as we started, is lack of knowledge, you know. And, you know, with our investment banker who became a chef, I want to know what's your take on that one. You, you need to find somebody who you, are, you can find home with being honest about. Uh, in most, in most instances, it's our mother, it's our bigger brother, it's our whoever. But then, what if they're not good with dealing with money, you know? And you mentioned something about... Um, we're very happy to be open to our friends and our family and not to the actual financial institution. But then what if I'm scared of being open to them? Because they've told me if I don't pay, they're going to ITC check me and ITC this, or if I don't pay, they're going to do this, A, B, and C. So um, the, the, the narrative then becomes, I'm scared to be open to them because some harm or some detriment might happen to me financially. So rather eating one month, ah, I'll pay the other month, you know what I mean? So rather let me keep my secrets with me, I'm scared to tell my partner or my, or my mom because if I tell my mom or my dad or whoever it is that I trust, they'll see, ah, it's not working well this month, you know? So it's more than just like, how do you, tell your next best person that you're, you're safe with, it's, it's, it's more about what it also brings to you to be honest. You know, being honest is like being vulnerable. Uh, it's putting stuff out there that actually, hey guys, I messed up last month, I partied two months, so I'm in this space. So now you go tell F&B that, so, or, or your bank that, sorry. You go tell your bank that, and they'll be like, yo bro, okay. we don't really care, you know? We still want our deposit. Do you get me? I get you, and I think that's, that's it. Get yourself the right advisor and get yourself a financial institution that's going to speak the language which you understand, i.e., you know, communicate with you in a comfortable way where you can trust them. And I think you, you're you right. Most of us don't want to be vulnerable, but it starts with budgeting. I, knew, I know you said I'm in the industry, but most of us can't take a look in the mirror. Never mind budget. I'll ask a lot of my clients, did you look at yourself in the mirror today? Most people get dressed, go to work, spend the entire day, they never saw a mirror. Sure. And it's that fear of ourselves, which is the fear of our lack of knowledge, which is the fear of being in control. Right. Money is a tool and all of us can control it. And money has a system of rules. Even that financial institution that's scary and wants to ITC you, sure. they have processes, they can't just do it. The call center person is doing a job and a lot of them are poorly trained sometimes, sure. but, mm. and they're aggressive. But in reality, I say find someone you can just have a fair conversation and increase the knowledge. You know, debit order is governed by the National Payment Systems Act 78 of 1998. No financial institution can do anything to you with a debit order without keeping that law in mind. But our responsibility as consumers is to know what our rights and responsibilities are. Can I ask a quick question? So, debit order is coming up on the 25th. I know by the 20th that I cannot make my fulfillment. What are my rights within that to safeguard my, my data and myself? Okay, first so thing. My credit okay. and myself. First thing is being open and transparent. Pick up the phone, call your financial institution, 
and try and get them and not. They'll be fine with it. They're fine with it. Let me tell you happen, what happens. You know your girl, you don't have money on the 25th. Sure. Yeah. So you reverse the debit order on the 25th, right? Once you reverse the debit order under the National Payment Systems Act, you then trigger something called NADU, which is a non authenticated early debit order. Mm -hmm. You've been a bad boy. So in the terms and conditions of your debit order, it says whenever you're a bad boy, they can institute NADO. Okay. NADO is the crocodile. Okay. Okay. It's the shark. Ah, okay. And the, the way it works is they start to track you. Okay. And the next time there's money in your account on the third, yeah. it disappears. And then everybody complains, hey, this financial institution took my money and my debit order is on the 25th. No. In your contract, it says that if I miss a debit order, you can start tracking me. And the next time there's money in my account, you can take it. So are you saying that if I'm not going to miss on the 25th, they must draw on the 25th, I must reverse it. No, no, Don't. no. I must must reverse it. Don't. The, the no reversing. Like they must take. No, 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 no. But no. then they're going to take. There's nothing there. No, 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 no. Then they're going to leave with the 150 Rand charge okay. on top of that. No, I think it's about communication. If you get them early enough, they will not debit to your financial institution. Mm. Okay. What I'm saying is when you deliberately reverse, reverse it, it. Oh. there's consequences. The consequences that you trigger NADU. Okay. And, and once NADU starts operating in your account, whenever there's money, they take it whenever. It's no longer about our contracts. It's about our contract says that if you can't meet it on this date, we collect whenever there's next money. And that's why people get confused when the money is taken suddenly. Yeah, okay? yeah. And you in customer care, how do you deal with it? So what I was also going to say is that it's a very important thing to actually call and find out because, for example, as Metropolitan, we um, allow you to actually miss about six payments in a span of seven years. So it's two payments that you actually are able to miss where we are actually able to facilitate that. You give us a call and say, okay, listen, whatever, whatever is happening and we allow you to miss payment, I think between zero and three years. Um, that's the first one where we say, okay, you're able to, to miss your payment. Um, and then we simply collect on the next pay date. Also, you're able to let us know um, of the date maybe that you now prefer, when I have money which is, yeah. yeah. And um, I think with, you know, just also, giving us a call and you know finding out then you're able to say you know some people uh, for a very long time they used to have a debit orders on the first and you don't know why because you got paid on the 25th so why do you have to wait that five days for it because now a lot has happened and the money is, is, is gone um so you know those are the types of things where if you actually call us there's are some you know operational maneuvers that we can do to actually assist you in that and i'm sure a lot of people don't know and are rather reversing reversing incurring charges right. for themselves right. um, and then fika right. is also maybe involved and they're yeah. able to that may affect you know your credit score and so forth um so there are ways to actually avoid that and as metropolitan it's something that we are actually um, doing as well so i'm a freelancer work for myself i don't have a 25th pay date but i have checks coming in yeah. so for me i don't like david orders you know i i, I like to pay my debt when i have when the money the in money, the account yes. uh, either prepay it or pay enough for the next couple of months whatever the case is mm. but mm. I, that's it. I don't know if I have money that date. Yeah. Because clients said to me the 28th, the but then uh, oh, no. ning, ning, it's the 5th. Yeah. You know, so I, I can't change what my remuneration does to me, yeah. but the, uh, the, the insurer, insurer hmm. wants their money on that date. How do I then fix or like move around that? Well, we do have PayPal's, like for example, I wouldn't speak obviously for the industry, but particularly sure. for Metropolitan where you are able to actually go and pay at one of our PayPal's and say, okay, this is the, you know, your premium and so forth. Um, also, you are able to actually do EFTs as well um, when you do wish to, to pay in. So it's not always the that it needs to do. But the most important thing that we said is that you need to communicate. So, so if you're a freelancer, you heard it from the horse's mouth, mm. communicate and the financial institution only wants you as a client. And I think it's also important, another lesson here is who you do business with. Ask them their terms and conditions. <laughs> Some companies will not move away from the debit order. It's their way of business. Their systems are not flexible enough yeah. to accommodate you. So don't do business with them. It's about shopping around and asking because a lot of people don't like compulsory payments mm. but the compulsory payment is actually useful for someone who lacks discipline 
But if you're that person who's disciplined, you want to work with a financial institution that's going to allow you mm. that flexibility for you to be yourself. Mm. You can do a single annual payment, uh, premium payment, for example, when mm. you get your lump sum, your payday. Mm. You know, you can pay a few months in advance. There's ways of getting around it. But let's get away from the fear factor of saying, I can't call them. I'd rather just reverse it and see what happens because the reversal means that they can trigger nado which means that anytime money is in your account they take it <laughs> plus you're going to pay your penalties of having missed that debit order but my question perhaps to you is what happens in a situation where there's a mistake you know you double debit me and i i then miss other debit orders as a result of you um, taking doing, it twice. Taking That's a good question. Yeah. Mm. Um, so actually, um, I'm actually in complaints. So that is where I actually see debit orders quite a lot, where clients mm. are coming at us, and we have made the mistake as the insurer. Mm. The first thing is that we own it. It does happen. We work with systems. We work with people, and mm. errors do happen. Sometimes um, it does occur that it is a system issue that we're currently experiencing. Sometimes it happens, you know, we often get that um, during weekends um, where a client maybe hasn't specified whether they would like to be debited on the Friday or the Monday between mm. that and we just choose whichever one we want mm. and you like, no, listen, I was not ready, you know, for whatever the case might be. So um, us as Metropolitan, first thing is that we would definitely um, own up to the mistake and then we want to put the client back to where they were if it had not happened mm. so that means if you incurred any bank charges we are actually willing to then actually cover your bank charges as mm. well so that you you're not left at, at any disadvantage we literally want to square you up to where you were before the mistake happened mm. you know our complaints team it, it's very well trained and we try to get to those cases very urgently okay so so this is one example of where it works you know and now in most instances norms we know you call them they'll tell you it's your daba you know, but you know, missing a debit order affects your credit score. So next time I want to borrow, they're like saying you don't honor your payments yeah. and all those things. So, so that's why the debit order is actually very key to us understanding um, how money works. And uh, just when you mentioned that, when it uh, does affect and it was actually on our fault or our fault, what we can do is actually print out a letter for you or um, we so can actually can do a letter that to, you can wow. take to oh, your banker like as that. well, mm. where we actually explain and highlight what has actually occurred and if the bank can reevaluate. So it's something that our client can actually take um, to the bank or whichever creditor that they're working with just so that they can be squared up. And it's important because banks make between eight and nine, nine billion rand a year from debit order charges. Some banks charge as little as 40 rand for missed debit order. One bank I saw charges 250 rand for a missed debit order. So even if you miss a debit order for nine, 89 rand, was of shy and 110 rand. So it's important again, choose your financial institution well. Every month there are 33 million debit orders which happen in South Africa. <laughs> and there's 14 million NADOs, 14 million sharks. Because the NADO is the shark. It's just waiting. Or there's the more NADOs or the than debit orders. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> it's, it's, the NADO is just waiting for, with an open mouth. You know, so, so, so let's manage our money better because mm. Those charges, they, they, they come back to hurt us big time. Beautiful, guys. You know, thank you very much for... It is really... We are easily end up... The information is great. No. And especially the debit order thing. You know, sometimes when a debit order doesn't go, you go, yes! <laughs> I've got money. That is a problem for you. It's going to hit you bad. Let's talk about the, the burden of financial uh, matters coming to the you know, the well-being, the mental health well-being. Tell it they end the mental health, you know? You know, sometimes people suffer from anxiety. They've got money problems. Mm. They don't know where to go. They don't talk about it. There are people who are financially struggling, mm. but they need to maintain the soft life. Mm. You know, the Insta life. But they don't have money, you know? How can you help a person going through that anxiety you know, to make them think positively. You, you cannot compare yourself with people who have money already or are there. So if you know that you are not on their standard, just distance yourself a little bit, recover, 
speak to yourself get someone to help get someone to give you hope on how to get back on your feet read financial books listen to financial podcasts go to uh, uh, metropolitan's mm. websites and see how they advise people to save their money or whatsoever i think that can help as well it's that financial education i mean this program is part of that um we need to be accountable for our financial decisions and a new year's resolution i would give to some people is get more knowledge okay and get more knowledge also from the right spaces okay so i wouldn't say log on to twitter and start using twitter as your financial advisor no but i would say get a reputable source of information um buy good books which have been rated to well um spend time on youtube um watching the right videos that's the only way you can get around this but i think you you, you are right um the question is um where where does my accountability end and the responsibility of the financial institution start the problem and reality for most people is that it never starts people never start with any accountability except for blaming someone else for their decision and here's the beauty about financial planning you can always fix things so i've seen people who have gotten into debt over 15 20 years and they've got out of debt but they didn't get out of debt next month it takes 18 months sometimes 24 months but come on think about it 20 years debt gone in two years three years through coaching through someone helping you and and that's what we want and and i think we need to try and make those choices you know because we've kind of resigned ourselves to the fact that once i'm down and out i'll never i'll never i'll never come out of itc i'm doomed no you can come out but it takes that first step of seeking help and having that conversation when we started this um i thought david orders was something very simple but it seems like there's a lot more to it than what it looks like so we're giving you a dessert that's also multi-flavored multi-layered multi-colored it's i mean it's it's exactly like the topic that we're talking about it seems like it's quite simple but there's a lot more to it so what you're eating is um at the bottom we have a chocolate mousse which is very airy so we have um, a little bit of bitter and a little bit of that airy texture in the middle there that brownish yellowish thing yes. is a uh, sponge cake okay. which is also has a little bit of air but it's different it's almost like a biscuit cake you know something like that mm -hmm. and then at the top we have a berry compote so mm. the berry compote is a little bit sweet a little bit tart you know the biscuit is a little bit sweet there's a little bit of bitter at the bottom and then on top is some sugar work it's got a little bit of crunch so multi-layered multi-textured multi-flavored yeah. thank Enjoy. you Enjoy, guys. Yes. Like, yes. <laughs> like me let's dig into the dessert yeah. then we'll continue yeah. our um, beautiful um conversation yes With our conversation, I mean, obviously, when you're in a restaurant, obviously, you need to take it as a takeaway, you know? In our powerful conversation, what is it that you think that you are taking home? Something that you know, you know, I came in here, I didn't know, now I know. I'm taking this to home. What stuck with me was that um, how bad it is to reverse debit orders and that it's so much better to just make a plan, speak to them beforehand than hitting that reverse button once it's gone through. So that's what I'm leaving here with. I didn't know that. So. Yeah. I'm like, we literally learned a lot. So I think I'm going to start, you know, making decisions about getting into property yeah. and buying property. I think, yeah. Mm, what I'm learning is we need to do more financial education. I think mm. people need to know. So for example, I'll do it quickly on my calculator here, my trusty calculator. If you take out a bond for a million rand, um, you pay them back 1.8 or 1.9 million, which is basically twice. Huh. So, so essentially there is a need for more financial knowledge. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and what we're sharing also, I'll, I'll dilute it to say it's not for everyone. You need to stay in your lane and your knowledge ability. Thank but you. it's important to understand that with every financial decision, there's a consequence. Yeah, my, my, my take from this is that uh, 
channels are open, you know, uh, between the clients and the insurers yes. and financial institutions, which is which is a great thing. You know, usually when you mm -hmm. try by all means to hide yourself from Umashonis, you know, yeah. you don't want to, 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 to open that channel, but uh, it's, it's very relieving uh, uh, that financial institutions are opening the channels and doors for you to communicate with them and then also that uh, you 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 need to be responsible mm -hmm. you know apart from from uh, financial knowledge and whatnot responsibility is a, it's an instinctual nature of a, of a human being mm -hmm. so it's something that we need to whenever we have money we need to be responsible on how we we spend it mm -hmm. and then it's good that whenever i want to communicate there's my bank there's my institutions that, that, have, that holds my money and I can speak to them. My takeaway from everything is to shop and shop and shop some more. Um, you know, when it comes to all your financial products, whether it's going to be insurance or investment or, you know, everything that we've spoken about now, banking, whatever. Um, you know, because by shopping around, you're actually opening yourself up to get the information. Because when you choose a financial product, you're choosing a partner. Or when you're choosing an insurer, you're actually choosing a partner. Um, so you need to know who you're getting in bed with. And you need to know that, you know, this partner that you've chosen, you guys are going to go all the way together. Um, so now we were talking about a sore point. Would your partner understand your sore point? So um, you have to take, um, you know, a careful look at who you decide to go with, um, you know, in the industry, who you're going to, um, you know, bank with, who you're going to insure with, um, who you're going to invest with. Um, you know, so yeah, my takeaway is that, you know, choosing a financial product is choosing a partner and you need to make the right choice and you need to be informed. And I think like with financial freedom, that's where it really starts from, is like being honest with yourself. Self, yes. Like you say, with yourself first. Mm -hmm. And then you go and tackle the other things yes. outside. Nyabonga guys for joining for joining us today. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a expect you are always with me every day and it's mm. yeah every you'll day. never leave my sight. <laughs> Together forever. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Please remember these tips in Zanzi. These are the tips that will help you do the, the right financial decisions. Nami myself as an artist I know I made some financial mistakes but after these conversations I'm gonna be stronger. My finances yonki into uh, I need your number, I need your job, <laughs> you know, because uh, sometimes we do uh, make financial mistakes. But anyway, guys, after this dessert, after these drinks, Tina, we're still here, we're still finishing our desserts, me. Yeah, Tina, we'll see you. Stay, stay tuned for, for the next episode. It's going to be burning. Cheers, guys. Ay, nyabonga. Nyabonga, Chef Wami. Yeah.